Um, so my project, well, the main project while I'm here is to develop a new prescriptive building code for social housing. Uh, or up to six stories in size of the, the buildings. Uh, we might go higher, but that's what we currently allow light frame construction in the United States, so it's easy to transfer it. Okay. So there's a high demand for social housing in Chile. The, the housing, especially in parts of Conce uh, Concepcion and in Santiago, is, is an issue. Um, the regional government budgets, though, um, they're not increasing uh, that much, and it's they're having difficulty um, to cover the costs of these social housing projects that they end up starting. There's currently one under construction in uh, Concepcion. Um, historically, the buildings have been designed individually uh, rather than as a cookie cutter. They uh, often the whole complex will be the same, but individual projects are always individual. And uh, traditionally, they're made out of concrete or confined masonry, which has been the traditional uh, system. Uh, in From Concepcion going north, going south, it's typically wood. Like the social housing in Lota is wood, and everybody says only poor people live in wood, but it's because they don't have in the wood con in the wood code, we're just barely bringing plywood into it, uh, to the code. So they end up not having, being able to get this lateral strength for earthquakes very well out of wood construction with the current uh, methods. Um, they can consist of single family row houses, uh, up to six story condominiums. Um, the non Standard design, though, ends up that the contractors are all continually relearning what they want for this construction, how the systems go together. There's not a standard set of connections, standard set of detailing for concrete reinforcement. None of that is currently in this class of structures. So I was the mediating, the mediator of the warring parties to get our international residential code which is our prescriptive code. We restrict it to three stories, and then we restrict it to single family because of turf battles between the concrete industry and the steel industry versus the wood industry. So 95% plus of all of our buildings that are residential, it's actually about 98% on the mainland, are wood in the United States. Um, if you want to take into up to four-story commercial, the, about that market in the United States is a, currently at about 15% and growing very quickly, uh, is in light frame construction because of cost. Money drives everything. If you can have the greatest idea, if it's not financially viable, it's not going to go anywhere. So right now, our prescriptive code goes from the little bungalows, these World War II type bungalows there, that were there, um, to, oh, come on back up, there. So we have row houses, townhouses we call them, and in Europe they'll be called row houses. And we have our McMansions. <laughs> um, the largest one that I'm aware of in the United States happens to be the Wrigley Aris, um house that was built under this code. It's a little bit more than 30,000 square feet for that house. The ballroom is 10,000 square feet. Okay. Um, so what we propose to do is take the IRC as our template. That sets up what is the performance and match it to what the Chilean code has for performance objectives. It shouldn't have sites weigh more than X amount. It has to take this kind of gravity load for snow and the wind loads and the seismic. All of those are set up here. We'll transfer the, the Chilean one then. And we're going to begin with the timber frame side and do all the calculations in behind to make these buildings work. And we're going to transfer it into the Chilean prescriptive code. The difference is, and why it's easy to do, is these apartments are typically restricted to about 90 square meters maximum. We're going to go to 110 in our square 
uh, area. But that's a pretty small apartment with lots of walls. And because they have so many walls in these buildings, it's easy to make them calculate out for engineering purposes to make the building stand up. And then put in standard details so that the, cons, the contractors learn what these standard details are. They can train their personnel to construct them with higher quality because they're the same for every building and things like that. They can change the footprint of layout of the floors and things like that, room difference, but how the walls get attached to the floor, how the floors get attached to the next floor down, those are all standard details of how you actually put the thing together to guarantee the performance is there. And then after we have the wood side in, which is my main background, then we're going to move to get the concrete, masonry, and steel sides in there so that it's not a market exclusionary code. Then it comes down to still competitive as what costs the least is what it will be built out of. And you can start putting in energy. So you want you reduce your energy, put insulation in it. All that stuff can go in this code to try whatever the objective of the federal government's objectives and the regional government's as performance that they want, they can put in this as the objective. And then you do the back engineering up front as to meet those objectives and put that into the standard detailing of how you build the building. There's a couple of additional projects out there that I've been asked to uh, help with. In Concepcion, uh, my main uh, tie is to University of San Sebastian. They have asked me to teach a class, take all my timber code classes, the timber design classes, and translate them into Spanish to match the Chilean timber code, and then teach a class that universities can send professors to to learn how to teach timber design and give them the tools to do it. So a wider scope than just Catholica, Bio Bio, and Concepcion are the only ones right now in the country that are teaching timber design. But you have a great timber resource here. It's one of the main industries of the, of the entire country. But no one teaches people how to, te to design with it properly, so they build improperly and misuse the timber, so then you have decay and all the other stuff goes with it. And so they've asked me to do that. Now, that's, that's an easy task to do, to simply translate slides and interpret them into their code. University of Concepcion has asked me to help them. You now, this last year was the first cross-laminated, CLT is cross-laminated timber. It was invented in Europe. And the first ever plant was opened about eight months ago in Chile. And they want to build an office and residence combination mixed-use building on University of Concepcion, so about 100 by 100 meters footprint, eight stories tall. Uh, out of CLT and be the first building in the country built out of CLT and show the advantages and get the detailing so that it doesn't end up being a black eye for the industry of misusing it. Putting wood out in weather, it will rot. I don't care what you do to it, it will rot. <laughs> so try and show them the details to make it have longevity. Then at Pontifica Catholic University in Valparaiso, uh, they are the main institution dealing with bridges and bridge design and they've asked to put in a, a extra chapter in the bridge design manual for the country for retrofitting bridges to take timber decks and stuff so, and I'll show you the advantage here. So this is University of San Sebastian. When I was here in 2008 I had the Engineers Without Borders which I was the uh, faculty advisor, we did a lake restoration project on that lake because they had been dumping raw sewage into it for the last 30 years prior and we were having fish kills. And so we went through and it was part of the post uh, earthquake recovery for Concepcion to implement our plan to restore that lake at that time. Um, and so that's where I'll be. Only university in North America that teaches both a full term undergraduate and a full graduate level timber engineering class in all of North, including Canada. And so that's what I'm translating to be allow them to use that in Chile. 
the manufacturer, this is a CLT building that was built in, um, this one went up in Seattle. Um, and it's accelerated, so you can build these buildings and you put up an entire floor structurally in one week with four laborers. You can't do that with concrete. Typical concrete is 18 laborers and right at about a month per floor because you have to wait for the concrete to cure. And so the accelerated, the financing changes for the developers. Uh, so at, in the United States, at 12 to 15 stories, you're saving a million and a half dollars in interest alone for construction financing by using CLT. And so that's why it's starting to move in Europe and North America so quickly. Chile is, has the first plant actually in South America that's manufacturing it. We'll see if we can help them get off the ground and keep moving. But it goes in in big panels like this. Uh, it goes in, you typically have four laborers. The, all the connections are pre-assembled onto the panels and it goes together like Lego blocks more than anything else. So it's very quick. Then you come back in and put your utilities in after the fact, just like you do in concrete. Those are some of the uh, concepts of what it might look like. Uh, we've done all the fire tests now for, and it's been uh, adopted more and more into the world of, of allowing the exposed timber in these higher buildings. <coughs> The timber bridges, this is a pedestrian bridge going in and outside of Portland, um, but it's uh, accelerated construction because it's a light material, so you can pre-assemble it, lift it in as a unit, set it in place, you don't have to shut down the traffic as long, all that sort of things. Uh, you can build the bridge off to the side of the road, disassemble the bridge and then put it in place rather quickly rather than build it in place. More importantly, this is in Chile from when I was here before. Uh, this, if you see the yellow trestles, that's the railroad uh, system. Is the, they use that yellow on their bridges a lot. We were putting in a retrofit truss on this case to, uh, so that they didn't have to redo the foundations or the columns underneath, all that stuff, because we lightened up the deck by putting wood there instead of concrete and preservative treated. It's a 75 year life expectancy on the bridge and concrete is running about the same if you maintain it. So this is one of the bridges flying in the entire bridge at one time. And it comes in large volumes. It uses a large volume of timber. It gives a better market for the radiata pine that's very treatable in this country. The problem is is they don't currently cut the lumber in sizes that you need in some of the members. So I'm also working with the Softwood Lumber Export Council of America with CORMA and INFOR, the two organizations that are equivalent for this country, to look at import tariffs and stuff to try and allow these certain members to come in at larger size until they decide they're just going to start manufacturing in this country. So. Then uh, in 1988, uh, we have, in the United States, Congress passed that we have to have a timber bridge. They, Congress funded a timber bridge in every state of the country to try and open up the idea to, to our own people, and we use wood so much that a lot of Department of Transportation are afraid of the maintenance side of it. We had to show them that with preservative treating, the maintenance isn't any more than what it is for concrete. So, I went through some of the things that we need to do to use and, and support the Chilean industry to allow them more domestic sales instead of relying so much on the American market for their products. Right now, most of their radia pine is shipped north. <coughs> this is a bridge. Where is it? This is a bridge that was done, University of Concepcion replaced the deck on this bridge down in southern Chile. Um, in, incorporating what's called a stress lamb deck that they've been using off and on, but they still don't have anything to design it in their actual code. They have to do it as a one-off thing and get special permissions. So it, it ends up working to their benefit. Okay. Would you like to take any questions? I'll take questions. Yeah. We have time for a couple yeah. of you. So 
What's the wood that they're using primarily then for construction? Radiata pine here. It's a okay. plantation grown. It's the same that is the main plantation uh, species for New Zealand as well. It grows in Southern California a little bit. It's a low density wood, so it has to have much larger sections in order to have enough strength because it's, mm -hmm. it's a weaker material because it's more air in it than, than the wood cell fiber. Um, but uh, it grows very quickly here. The rotations on the farms here are somewhere on the order of 15 to 18 years, where it's 80 years in the United States. It's a huge difference in turnover of your product. Mm -hmm. It makes it very sustainable. Because the in Chile, you're not allowed, the, the lumber industry is not allowed to log the indigenous to the native trees. Only the Mapuche can do that. and. There's an illegal logging issue going on because of that, because it's a beautiful red wood. I, I'd love mm -hmm. to have some furniture out of that wood. <laughs> but but it, it's, you can't, you're not supposed to cut it down. <laughs> and so we're using with the radiata pine, and it just amounts to you need to have larger sizes, and the connectors have to be more num numerous on it, is all the difference really is. So, but it's very treatable with preservative treatment. Uh, so that it can be out in the rain, but you have to deal with the shrink and swell of the materials and natural materials like a sponge. Mm -hmm. And it expands and contracts with the amount of moisture in it. So you have to adjust how you make the connections to make it work properly and last. That's all. Thank you. So yeah, I have actually two questions. When you said the preservative, what is the, as a chemist, what is the preservative that you typically use? So um, they still allow CCA, which has, it's a copper chromium arsenate. Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. does not allow that any time that's in contact with humans. Uh, so it's essentially eliminated that market. We've come up with what's called quats to eliminate the arsenic. Mm -hmm. Still has copper and chromium in it. The problem with the quartz is it's about six times as corrosive to the metal fasteners. Mm -hmm. right so either you use stainless steel or you have very heavy galvanization, right. and which is the galvanization is the cheaper option and stronger. <coughs> stainless steel is very weak as a material. Mm -hmm. um, you could also use, they still use creosote here, and you'll see creosote used by the Forest Service a lot, which is a... It comes from charcoal and coal to make creosote. Um, it's historically a very good preservative, but if it catches fire, it burns really well. <laughs> so you have to be careful of what a little bit of the application anymore. You know, there's trestles go up in the United States. Old trestles burn up really fast in the United States that are old creosote when the wood gets dried out a lot. So those are, right now, um, Chile is slowly moving over to move to quats because of the arsenic issue around humans. And you just, you just keep concentrating it into your body when you're around it. So. And my second question, which reminds me of when I was a kid growing up in California, and probably Betsy, is we were always told it's better to be in wood frame houses mm -hmm. during earthquakes. There's no question on that. There's Performance wise, there's no question on that. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the issue is, is the weight. So mass times acceleration is what your force. I'm getting and take the sled back out. The kids were mining it, and the adults yeah. were falling. And the child labor law said that doesn't really work. <laughs> and so they shut down the mines. So they import virtually all except for hydroelectric yep. energy. You know, so that's that's where it comes from. So if energy comes in, wood's going to be much preferable because it's a natural insulator. What kind of wood? Is, is it burning in California when they have these huge fires? Are these pines? Oh, it's everything from radiata pine to lodgepole pine to ponderosa pine. Um, all of the trees in the woods, once they get dry, it really is the needles and stuff that really transfer fast. Mm -hmm. It's not the trunk so much that's burning. It's every, all the small branches and that, and it doesn't matter what species. Although the eucalyptus blow up. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Eucalyptus, has, <laughs> yeah. eucalyptus <laughs> has a main fuel in there, and that's one of the, you, that's the second species you can have construction lumber here is eucalyptus. It's very strong lumber. Um, but they usually use it for pulp and paper rather than construction lumber. But if they, they do, Chile is one of the only countries that has eucalyptus grading rules for strength in construction. So they could transfer it. Um, so, 
Parallel, I realize you work on building codes. Um, but I wonder if in your conversations with government or in your work with the universities, <clears throat> is there anyone at the table talking about the social aspect? So for example, I've lived in Chile for 30 years. I live in a wooden and stone house out in the country. Um, and one of the things that happens in Chile, or has happened over time, is that um, low-income housing, social housing, uh, when they begin it, it spreads from here to the horizon with the same model or the same three models, all right? Um, destroying what is local culture, history, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's all on a Santiago model. There, there's no such thing as a regional application. So I wonder, is there anybody at the table, government or university-wise, that brings that up ever, understanding that it's not part of code? I, I have. Okay. But also in BOBO Bio region, the BOBO Bio regional government, we had a meeting with them. When did Peter have them? Have it did that last July? No, that's July. And I brought that up to the regional government. I said, we would like to change that. <laughs> so at least the government's aware of it, the regional government's aware of it. And that was down. what I would like to have happen. Why we, when we do this, I want to have the apartment layouts in at least five different layouts. But then you can take those building blocks and mesh them to make the outside of the building look the way you want. And we're trying to incorporate architecture into the project to have architects, and I want to bring that because the United States went through the same thing with the yeah. big track builders. No one likes to live there because you can't tell your house from the neighbor's house, right? And, and, but it's easy for the contractor. But if you have a unit of the apartment, there's only a set series of those units that you lay out the way you want. The contractor now has the skills to put the unit together. How it's configured and planned is immaterial. It doesn't change the cost. And that really, those big track building, that's all cost driven. It's yeah. cheap to have one design Go the whole works, and nobody likes it in any country. The Europeans don't like the row houses either. So it, it, it's the society hasn't had the influence on the people paying the bill, and that's what needs to happen. And in a country like this, it all comes from Santiago again. Uh, it's a big. It's a big. Mm -hmm. The Bio Bio is willing to try to get an exception. At least they told me that last year when we were putting this project together, whether they really will when the, the skin hits the road, I don't know. That's and a, politi that's a political in. decision. <laughs> now that's totally a political decision. And that's uh, not. The only politics that I'm trying to get involved with right now, I'm on the science and planning committee for the World Conference of Timber Engineering that's going to happen. I got it to move here in fall, August of 2020. And Jose, who is the main leader at Catholica, has started com com contacting the Argentines and the Chilean Ministry of Forestry and Trade. And we're trying to get them to hold a parallel track to negotiate common management practices for the forests of Southern South America and a common trade uh, issues to stop some of the illegal ones to try and deal with how you manage it. But it, if, if you don't cover the trade, it's not going to work. And so we're, the Argentines have said, probably, they haven't said yes yet. But they have two years before that happens. And I hope that it happens, because if the Argentines come in, we might be able to get the Brazilians in as well. I talked to Dylan, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yep, I know I'm you guys. Sorry. No, it's fine. I know you guys have a lot to talk about. I can already see. I can see sparks flying. We have the rest of the day. I, I'll, be, I, I, I'll be happy to talk. To you. Okay. Well, right. Yeah. Your ideas are welcome. How to make this the most effective? Right, next. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you again, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs>